Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentat, CEO of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. We will continue to update our website over the weekend, but will not be holding the Facebook live stream over the weekend. We will be back on live on Monday. I will start with our daily updates. We now have 4,043 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada, and 858 of those cases are in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has two cases, and Sarnia-Lambton has reported five cases. The state of Michigan now has 2,856 cases, with 851 cases in Detroit. To date, we have nine confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex. Overall, 669 individuals have been tested for COVID-19, and of those tested, 462 tests are pending. It is important to clarify that pending tests are potential positive cases. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. It is anticipated that wait times for results will decrease next week with the addition of the Public Health Lab in London. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on clinical assessment. All specimens submitted will be tested. Where there are shortages of testing kits, then the following groups will be, will be prioritized for testing. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and of long-term care facilities and retirement homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated, rural, and or indigenous communities, and symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada. Please continue to visit WeChu.org for the most current information and updated case counts. Travelers who have traveled outside of Canada in the past 14 days are required to self-isolate for 14 days. Any returning traveler who presents with symptoms upon arrival in Canada will be placed under federal quarantine orders. If you have traveled outside of Canada and are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are three options available. Complete the online self-assessment tool available at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or contact your primary care provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment if that option is available. They will guide you for next steps, including contacting public health or attending an assessment center. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so now, as uh, Teresa announced, that there are nine cases in our community. Uh, so the sixth case uh, that we reported is a female in her 60s with recent travel to Michigan. She developed symptoms on March 18th, went to the COVID-19 assessment center on March 23rd, and was admitted to Windsor Regional Hospital on March 24th, where she remains under hospital care. The Windsor Essex County Health Unit is currently following up with her close contacts. Case seven is a male in his 60s with recent travel to Michigan, and is also a close contact of case six, who also traveled to Michigan. The individual developed symptoms on March 18th and was tested at the COVID-19 assessment center located at Windsor Regional Hospital. He is currently seeking local medical care with moderate to severe symptoms and is in self-isolation. Case eight is a male in his 50s that work at a healthcare facility in Michigan. He developed symptoms on March 21st and was tested at the COVID-19 assessment center located at Windsor Regional Hospital. The individual is also recovering at home with mild symptoms and is in self-isolation. The VCHU is currently following with all the close contacts of both the cases. We just got notified about the nine case. We are still waiting for more details on those case and we will uh, update those details as needed and we'll reach out to all the close contacts uh, in a timely manner to make sure that uh, they're all following the public health directions. All these cases that we are getting in the community is travel outside of the country and only one case who traveled within Ontario. Many of you are wondering about the pending results and its impact on our control measures. So far, almost all except one have mild symptoms and currently recovering in home isolation. Having more confirmed cases in the community definitely puts you at a higher risk, but the control measures that are put in place for more than a week now should prevent the spread if and when everyone follows it. 
Having a confirmed diagnosis is very important for the clinical management of cases in the hospitals, long-term care homes, and in the healthcare worker settings. For most people who are currently self-isolating and waiting for the results, even if their results come back positive, their clinical management will not change. That is why it is important for individuals to have a health assessment done by a clinician to ensure that they do not need any other medical care. From a population health perspective, the measures that are currently in place, such as physical distancing, closure of non-essential businesses, will continue to be effective even in community transmission. It is very, very important for all of us to follow these measures. This is a difficult time and everyone is going through many challenges in life and we should not ignore the impact it may have on the physical and mental well-being of our community and our in individuals. There's a lot of stress and anxiety any everywhere and is not good for our overall health. To help reduce the stress, it is important to focus on what is in your control and follow those key steps. Create and keep routine. It will help you to stay focused and motivated to do things at home, whether you're working from home or just self-isolating. Number two, stay up to date with accurate information. There are a lot of misinformation going on. Social media is not helping anyone. Use credible sources to get your accurate information. There is no conspiracy going on. This is a real threat and we must do everything to our part instead of focusing on what others should do. Acknowledge and talk about your feelings. We use the term social distancing, which is more about physical distancing. Social distancing or physical distancing, we, we can still maintain our physical distance, but we, we still have to talk to people. Talk to your loved ones. Spend time with your family. Talk to your children, how they are feeling. Tell them how you are feeling. Help them understand what's going on in the, in the world. Get outside, even if, you, if, on, if it's only in your backyard. The outdoors and fresh air are incredibly important for our mental health. If you can bike or run outside, it is great. Please make sure you're maintaining your physical distancing when you're out. Do not touch your mouth, nose, and eyes when you're outside. Wash hands immediately when you return home. While isolation and maintaining physical distance is important to fight against COVID-19, it can have detrimental impacts on our mental health. We have to start thinking of innovative ways to stay connected to each other to ensure that we can sustain a mentally healthy community throughout this crisis. What does social prescribing look like in this new age of social distancing is the question we should be trying to answer. All of us are in this together and we must work together to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. We'll start with uh, CBC. Um, hi, I'm wondering, now that we have one patient in hospital, how does that change things at, at all in terms of protocol at the hospital? Does it change anything? Can you speak to that? Uh, well, uh, some, if someone is in the hospital, so that means they are needing medical care, which could be uh, important from the clinical management of, this, of that case. And uh, from a hospital perspective, obviously ensuring that uh, this person is in, under isolation and uh, following all this personal protective uh, equipment uh, uh, protocol that they need to. And making sure that uh, this person, if needed, to require critical care, require in intensive care, they can be provided with that care. It, it does uh, escalate the risk from, for that individual, but from a community perspective, the community perspective, community risk stays the same. And uh, anyone who is in self-isolation, if their symptoms worsen, it is time for them to contact uh, their healthcare provider, talk to the public health to see if they require any further assessment. Most people who are infected with COVID-19 have mild symptoms, and this is the case around the world. Most of them would not require any, uh, any medical care other than just self-isolating and uh, symptomatic management. Uh, so from that perspective, for the community, it still stays the same. For that particular individual, they, uh, their hospital needs or their clinical needs are met at the hospital. Just as a follow-up, uh, yesterday we heard that there were 50 possible cases being treated in hospital. I'm wondering if that number remains or if that has gone up today. 
So let me just clarify, anyone who is in the hospital who have any kind of acute respiratory failure type situation, they are automatically tested for COVID-19. For the risk of COVID-19 or any particular risk those individuals are, they are pretty much at the same risk as anyone else. Being hospitalized or having that urgent need definitely puts them at a higher risk of developing more severe consequences. So those 50 individuals that are in the hospital, they are tested based on their clinical presentation, not based on any other high risk than any of us uh, have. I'll take a question from the Windsor Star. I'm sorry, Dr. Ahmed, if you could uh, just expand on those 50 patients at Windsor Regional Hospital. We spoke with David Muche. He said he's been told by colleagues in Michigan of false negatives with test results. Those 50 patients, they had to be retested because the results from Toronto were taking too long. How likely is it that the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases will increase sharply within the next 24 hours? Well, we have a number of test results that are pending. and. It could have, it could go either way. We can all have all of those tests positives. We can have all of those negatives. So it's hard to say that how, how critical it is. Yes, we need the results from a clinical management perspective, as I mentioned. For anyone who is in the hospital whose clinical management may change depending on what their diagnosis is, we need those results. And I think it's uh, getting the results early on those individuals who are sick and are hospitalized is, is important for their clinical management and we will be uh, we will be looking at that from um, the severity perspective yes their clinical management would change if they have covid versus if they have some someone else so i think it really depends on their clinical situation what they're uh, going through right now just a follow-up question on a separate topic uh, you're talking about misinformation and social media uh, there's a video on YouTube by a general physician from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's talking about uh, safe protocols for grocery shopping, how uh, the COVID-19, uh, you can survive on plastic and metal for three days, on cardboard for up to a day. So therefore, you need to adopt uh, uh, protocols for bringing groceries into your home. Because this video has 12 million views. Is this something that Windsor Essex residents should be adopting? Well, we have uh, research, scientific research, WHO guidance, and uh, all the public health agencies' guidelines in terms of what you should be doing. The risk when you're going outside is, is high. When, if you're touching surfaces that are touched by many individuals uh, outside, the survivability of these virus on those surfaces is an interesting question from a research perspective, and, and there are some research that shows that this virus can survive for a longer period of time. The most important thing, even if you're not doing anything, is hand washing. As important it is to wash your hands with before, when you're going outside, when you're coming back home, the number of times you're washing your hand, and in theory, even let's say everything that you're touching is infected, if you're not touching that hand, uh, if you're not touching your mouth, nose, and eyes, and washing hands before, your risk of transmitting that virus or getting this virus inside your body is pretty much low or zero because you you just cleaned your hands for everything that people are saying and doing yeah you can do that but the most important thing is you still want to have to focus on washing your hands and ensuring that if you are cannot practice everything that is the only important practice that you would want to do we'll take a question from Amy Hundred. Of the number of cases, a number of them are from the Michigan area, and uh, a, number, a couple of them are health care uh, workers. How concerned are you about those numbers? Because obviously we're in Florida City, we're sitting all week, and um, just are you concerned that the numbers from Michigan confirmed cases here in Windsor Atlas could rise? Uh, well, that is, the, that is a risk to our community and we have been uh, communicating this risk for some time because of the, our unique nature of our people crossing the border and working there. And as, as I said earlier, many of them are providing essential services, essential care of the people who are in Detroit and who need that support. What do we need to do to prevent the spread in our community and protect our community? I think that's, that's something that, that we have been trying to address. And uh, 
until that happens, we, we will urge all these people who are crossing borders to take extra precautions to make sure that we are not bringing any of those viruses uh, in our community and infecting others in our community. So most symptoms you would you may see is uh, is just mild cold like you know the cough and fever which people may have typically for a few days without getting to the point of uh, of them having any difficulty in breathing any chest tightness any fever that is not going away despite taking Tylenol or it's coming back frequently so those are all the indications that the symptoms are getting worse and when and when we are contacting those individuals who are put on self isolation our nurses go through with all those details that what should prompt them but anyone who has these mild symptoms any difficulty in breathing, that should be a trigger for them to, to seek any kind of medical care, contact public health, or contact their healthcare provider. Uh, CTV. Thank you. Uh, the city announced that they'll be suspending transit Windsor starting on Sunday. Given that a lot of people use public transportation, but also the, commu uh, the concern about community spread, did you feel like that was the right decision? Well, I think uh, the, every decision that are currently being made, we have to weigh the risk and benefit of those decisions. Um, people taking transit, if they're not maintaining social distancing, if they're not washing their hands as they should, there is a risk that they can transmit it to other people. But on the other hand, you have to also recognize that not everyone have access to, uh, to a vehicle, a car, and they rely on public transport to go and get their groceries, get their medicines, get their supplies, whatever they need, get to work in some of these uh, places where, which are also essential services. So I think the, the overall risks and benefit, we have to try to look and mitigate those risks. Some of the risks that we can mitigate is by asking people to follow those behaviors and washing their hands and uh, maintaining social distancing, uh, physical distancing as much as possible. Uh, and on the other hand, from the transit side, I think there can be done. Uh, we, can, we can do more about those environmental cleaning to ensure that all those touch surfaces and places that are in the transit, it can be cleaned to ensure the safety and well-being of our community. So any decision that are currently being made, we have to look at the risk and benefit of this. This particular decision, it may have an impact on individuals who may not have a, a, their own personal vehicle. Okay, and then windsorite.ca, any questions? No? Any other questions from anyone? I have a question um, about the number of ventilators. I'm wondering if um, when we spoke with the chief of staff at the hospital about a week and a half ago, he gave us a number and he said that the hospital might be able to access even more ventilators. I'm wondering if you can tell us what the current number of ventilators at the hospital is. I cannot comment on that specifically because I'm not uh, aware of all the details about the ventilators that are currently available in the hospital. I think you should talk to the hospital to get a better handle on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.